Okay, so in our last video I showed you that you can just use R like a very fancy calculator. Um, you can still see some of the output from that here in this console window. And now we're going to uh, expand on that idea and go a little bit further with it. So um, let's just imagine you have a really simple data set. So, you know, maybe the heights of five different classmates. Um, so if, you know, I were to tell you uh, these heights, you'd probably write them down on a piece of paper, maybe separated by a comma. Um, and in R, that type of data group, so those five heights, uh, is referred to as a vector. So a vector is just a string of values. So it could, in some cases, it could be numbers. Um, in other cases, it could also be, you know, letters or words or something else. So um, you can define a vector in R by writing out the things that we want to be in our list. But we have to signal to R that we are making a list. And so we're going to do that using a function um, that's called, or it's a concatenate function or C function. Uh, so it's symbolized uh, out here in the console window, C, and then open parentheses. So uh, in R, any time that we want to use a function, it's going to take this type of format of the name of the function and then open parentheses. So Actually, if we look back to at our previous exercise, you'll notice we already used this square root function and the log function um, and the log base 10 function. So those are all examples. And I'm going to um, uh, do an additional step here before I use that concatenate function. So if I want to create a vector, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in my vector. Then I'm going to use the less than symbol the minus symbol, so that makes a leftwards pointing arrow. And I'm going to use that concatenate function, C. And I'm going to put in one, two, three, and then in quotation marks, red, quote, blue, quote, green. Okay. And then I'm going to press enter. And you might notice something. There's no output down here in the console window, right? What's going on? And actually something popped up up here in this upper right hand pane, and we'll come back to that. But um, uh, my point here is, so when we added this leftwards pointing arrow, um, what we did is uh, we actually assigned the output here from this concatenate function to the name that we put on the left hand side. And so uh, R is what's known as an object oriented language. Um, so R is set up really well to handle things called objects. And so uh, what we've done here is we've actually created an object, the object my vector, and then we've assigned this function to that object using this arrow symbol. Okay, so uh, this little arrow symbol is an assignment step. Okay, so now um, what I can do down here in the console window is if I type in my vector, and notice that RStudio knows it's an object now, now it spits out the things that I put into that vector. And um, so we kind of call this like calling the object. And now Let's try something else. So I'm going to type in my vector, the name. I'm going to use a square bracket, so it's in the upper right hand part of your keyboard. And I'm going to put three in the square brackets and press enter. So now when I did that, what this process did is it took the third item uh, in this list and it just returned that one item. So this is a process called indexing, uh, just selecting a particular item out of that vector. So now here's something a little fancier. So I'm going to go my vector square bracket C two comma four. Then I'm going to close my parentheses and close my bracket. You'll notice that RStudio actually automatically closes for me too. Okay, and now what have I got? So now I've got two, the second item in that vector, and then I've got red, which is the one, two, three, fourth item in that vector. And um, so I, when I put this function 
inside of this command. I nested that inside of the command. Um, and we can actually take this idea a little bit further. So I'm going to go my vector 4 colon 6. Enter. So, and now what you should see here, so what I've done is I've taken objects 4, 5, and 6. So let's just pop that out and just see what it does. So 4 colon 6 is going to return me 4, 5, and 6. Okay. And uh, here's one other option just for fun. So how about my vector negative 3. Okay, so in this case it's returned everything else except for 3. So that's your introduction to objects.